Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we will take ASCII art to the next level. Motherfucker! So last week we wrote a little program that actually generates ASCII art out of a video stream, either from the webcam or a video file. Now obviously there will be some drop frames because you cannot do it real time 24 frames a second. So if you overlay it on the actual audio of the real clip, it would get out of sync slowly but surely. So I suggest that you can render out a PNG sequence. And you can use Qt for that, that's easiest. Today we're going to actually do that with OpenCV as well. I found a way to do it in OpenCV. It's not the cleanest, but it works and it is fast. And somebody asked me, can you also render out the war game sequence or the Knight Rider sequence? Well, we can do them both. David Lightman was a master at computer games. A fast thinker. Oh, David! <laughs> Maybe you could tell us who first suggested the idea of reproduction without sex. Your wife? <laughs> Get out, my dear. And a promising student Hi. at an old game. Hi. With an electronic twist. Are those your grades? Yeah. I don't think that I deserved an F. Do you? You can go to jail for that. Only if you're over 18. This computer company is coming out with these amazing new games in a couple of months. And I want to play those games. Wow. What? We got something. He found the right code word to play the game. We're in. But it was the wrong computer. Shall we play a game? How can I ask you that? How about mobile thermo nuclear? Fine. All right. What the hell? The trajectory headings for multiple impact re-entry vehicles. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's great. All stations, this is Crystal Palace. I wonder if I should use my subs. 22 Typhoon-class submarines departing Petropavlov. What in the hell's happening here? Oh, my God. Shall we play? I have seven correction. Eight. That's eight redbirds. Get on the sack. Get on the flush the bombers. The Russians are still denying everything, sir. Who are you working with? Nobody. Why don't I don't believe you. Over day we have Soviet missile warning. Based on the arrest pending indictment for espionage. Espionage. Confidence is high. I repeat, confidence is high. Cobra Dane, is this an exercise? Negative, this is not an exercise. Give me the president on the horn. It's still playing the game. It's gonna start a war. Close up the mouth. Is this a game or is it real? War Games, playing soon at a theater near you. War Games, actually that's a funny movie to use the green text. Thank you for that suggestion. It hadn't occurred to me, but it looks kind of nice. Yeah, it has that 80s vibe. So now let's jump in the code and see how I render the PNG images with OpenCV. So here is the code. We introduce the free type include, which is basically a true type, but a free version. And I added a number of threads. I played around with the thread count. Four is the most optimal, uh, but I'm not really using a thread pool. I am just joining the threads. I spawning that number of threads and I'm joining them. So it can be that one of these threads has already ended and is waiting on the other threads in those four to end before picking up the new uh, images. So it could be made a bit more efficient, but yeah, generally it's fast enough for me now. This is still the same as in the last video. We desaturate the image to black and white and resize it so that each pixel corresponds with uh, a character so we resize it to 300 by 110 characters this is still that map function that maps out the luminance see the last video I created a new function here that's path 2 because we're using an image sequence and image sequences have a padded structure so they start for example with uh, four zeros and a one four zeros and a two, four zeros and a three, etc., etc., etc. So I currently set it to uh, 
six positions. Now this is still basically the same function as we had last week, but it has been extended somewhat. So here we create that new small uh, screen where we resize it. That used to be a separate function, but since I wanted everything to be uh, atomic in a single thread, I introduced it here on the stack. And here is the screen that we, or basically the image size that we defined for the PNG. So 1920 by 1080, eight bits color depth and the scalar Z to zero, which means zero, zero, zero. It's a black image. Then I uh, desaturate that image and make it small with, with that function that we just saw here that we had last week. Just reuse that. Uh, I don't need this anymore. We don't use that. So we can remove that. And that is the character array. I had to change the uh, AE that I used because the IBM TTF character set that I'm using here didn't have that character. So I changed it to a B, which is also nicely filled. So, so here I generate a path. So you push in a path and a frame count so it knows where to store that PNG that you uh, generated with the corresponding frame number. So that's what this does. Here we set the font height to 12, the thickness minus one. I don't know why you have to do that, but it works perfectly. Line style eight and base line to zero. I think we can also get rid of the baseline. I will clean the code up. And then we create a free type object. And this is managed by uh, OpenCV. When I deleted it, that's why I I got a bus error, so it's been taken care of for you. That's kind of cool. And we load that true type font. That true type font is in the exact same directory where your binary is. So I build it in build. So I copied ibm.ttf there. And I create an empty string. And then we go through all the characters per line because the put text is not aware of carriage return line feed. And then we put the text on a location, that's text org. So that is the text. And this is the output image that we created, that 1920 by 1080 image. We put it there, we set the font height and we set the color to BGR. It's not RGB in OpenCV, so to bright green with the th uh, thickness and the line style. Now I commented this out because this value, since this is not a proportional font, it's a non-proportional font, I expected the line height, the, the text size, to always be the same height, and it isn't. For some reason, TrueType uh, is aware of certain uh, heights, so if I didn't fix this to the maximum value that these two lines would print out on the screen, it would become a bit warped and wobbly. So what I did was I wrote that text to the screen, so basically uncommented this, and rendered a couple of frames and saw what the biggest value was, which was 10, so I put that in there. And that maps out perfectly. So if you would ever want to change the height of your font for some reason, uh, maybe you want to go to 4K, I don't know, you could do that. Then you may need to change this, and this is the easiest way to do it. It's it's a bit of a hack, honestly. Uh, you could actually render, uh, render a couple of frames and take the highest value, but you need to make sure that it is actually uh, a wide frame, because these Bs are pretty tall. So render a couple of wide frames and then you see what the tallest value is and wham, t put that in there and it's it's set for life then we write it so we take the image that we created and we write that to the path the p the string and depending on the 
extension that is the encoding that is used uh, this existed last week this existed last week i do a check if a directory exists because we have that render directory uh, read that and then i change the whole argument validation because we now have a couple of arguments the source video and the render directory where we want the image sequence to be rendered to so if we don't have a file we cannot continue if the directory doesn't exist or isn't a directory then we cannot continue if for some reason the capture interface can't read the file format then we cannot continue and otherwise we open that file and then we go into the main and I created a uh, static thread pool with four threads in this case. I read the total number of frames so I can calculate the process done and the percentage. So here I spawn those threads basically in this for loop here. And when it is empty, we have to wait until the current running threads have ended as well because if it's an odd number if it's not divisible by four then there are still joint threads to wait for of course and then we write it's 100 percent done so here we create those threads and here we pass in that path where to render to and the frame count here i uh, calculate the percentage done and write that to the same line and we increase the frame count and here i wait for the threads to end and that's what i said it's not really efficient uh, one of these threads of the four could already have been finished and it's still waiting for the other threads to uh, to be done before it starts to load some new frames so a thread pool would be a better solution but you get some atomic stuff and you have to do deal with futures and didn't really want to bother with that for now maybe i will update it at some point maybe it's a nice little lesson but that is the code and as you can see if we run it we go through 6517 frames in uh, 2 minutes and 11 seconds and on my macbook air it's even quicker because that has an ssd drive And 100 percent and we're done so now let's see how this works if we open davinci in my case whatever non-linear editor you ascii right so we first go to the media tab and we just drag in science we drag in the clips you need to be in this media import tab there's a little bug in the latest da vinci there we go so we have that and uh, we can drag it into the timeline oh i need to put it into the timeline in my project yes so i can now drag it in and let's drag that here and Let's take the actual video, because we need the audio, of course. And you can see they are different speeds, because this was presumed to be 24 frames a second. But I happen to know that this was shot on 30 frames, or rendered on 30 frames, not shot. It was probably shot on 24 frames, that's what we did in the 80s. That's not a bad idea. And there you have it. What? It looks bloody awesome. So there we have it. We used a true type font in OpenCV and we rendered that in a 1920 by 1080 image plane. Now obviously the text doesn't cover the whole plane because of the dimensions of the text. Uh, so what I would do is actually mask out around the text and center it in the center of my screen on my NLE and that works perfectly. Now obviously you can scale it up and make the letters a bit bigger as well. Just experiment with it. Be 
mindful though on the height of that letter for some reason even though this is a non-proportional letter that height of the lines just deviates and that's why we put a fixed number in there now i also promise you i rendered the knight rider uh, theme so let's have an outro with the knight rider intro and see you in the next one <laughs> Knight Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. Michael Knight, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in a world of criminals who operate above the law. Thank <laughs> you.